Thank you and welcome to the show this morning. The topic this morning is the Hands of God Recovery Ministry, and we're fortunate to have with us the senior servant or the senior pastor of the uh, Hands of God Recovery Ministry, uh, Pastor Kay Walker. And of course, uh, with uh, Pastor Kay Walker uh, is this whole idea of the recovery ministry. And I think mm -hmm. that, uh, Pastor Walker, we've talked about and we've talked to you on a number of occasions, but uh, we've never had an opportunity to really get into the uh, motives uh, for the establishment of such an organization and some of the things that might be associated with it and how you're planning on uh, really developing that into an organization mm -hmm. that can be of greater service. But before we get into uh, a discussion of uh, this organization uh, this morning, uh, uh, Reverend Walker, let's see if we can have you to talk about, uh, give us some information. And as we know, and as you know, you're no stranger mm -hmm. to uh, our audience this morning, but perhaps there might be a few individuals who might not know you. And so let's talk about your background, your education, and some of the things that motivated you in a real sense to think in terms of establishing this recovery uh, ministry. All right. Well, first of all, Dr. Hank, let me say thank you for allowing me the opportunity to uh, come on the show. And uh, my name is Kelvin Walker. I was born right here in Nashville, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Of course, I attended the public schools of Nashville. Uh, spent a, went, went in the Navy, spent time in the Navy, mm -hmm. not long in the Navy. Uh, had a kind of turbulent uh, younger life. Mm -hmm. Did a few uh, studies at Tennessee State University. Uh, didn't get a degree or anything. And also uh, did some courses at Trebe mm -hmm. Trebekah East Campus uh, Prison Program. Mm -hmm. Did that while I was incarcerated in the Tennessee State Prison mm -hmm. System uh, back during the 70s and mm -hmm. early part of the 80s. And mm -hmm. uh, that uh, kind of brings me to where I am today that, you know, my background, Dr. Haney, is actually what creates in me a passion to do what I do. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, just to say, you know, the Hands of God Recovery Ministries we found was a ministry that was birthed into me back mm -hmm. in 1987. Mm -hmm. Now, what happened was, Dr. Haney, prior to 1987, I was a drug addict. Uh, mm -hmm. I had spent 17 years of my life in active drug addiction, had mm -hmm. spent time incarcerated mm -hmm. in the Tennessee State Prison System. Mm -hmm. But on August 24th, 1986, uh, God just divinely intervened in my life. Mm -hmm. I, I wasn't anybody special. As a matter of fact, I had been shooting drugs all that day. Mm -hmm. And he, in, he intervened in my life, and not only did he break the bondage of mm -hmm. the drug addiction in my life and that negative lifestyle, mm -hmm. but at the same time, he called me directly into ministry. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I went into like seclusion mm -hmm. for about three months, and all I did was just feast on the Word of God and just get my physical health together mm -hmm. and everything. And that's all I did. And then uh, God had put a, a, a calling on my mm -hmm. life mm -hmm. to form a ministry that would impact the whole of society. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's where the Hands of God Recovery Ministries come from. Now, mm -hmm. it didn't start in 87. Mm -hmm. I got so excited about the idea, the concept, mm -hmm. that I ran downtown, got me a state charter, and and didn't do anything with it. Mm -hmm. and when the ministry actually, I actually opened up uh, my first recovery house mm -hmm. in November of 2002 mm -hmm. and got it chartered in the state of Tennessee mm -hmm. in July of 2003. Mm -hmm. But uh, in the hands of God recovery ministry, basically what, we, what we're what we doing is uh, we offer uh, dr alcohol, drug-free, safe, clean living environment for mm -hmm. people who are homeless, mm -hmm. drug addicted, people that are coming out of the prison mm -hmm. system, the jails, people that are just generally economically and, uh, mm -hmm. and socially disadvantaged in society. Mm -hmm. And what we're trying to do is put together some things, you know, that mm -hmm. would actually help people. Mm -hmm. Because we realize that there is a need out here mm -hmm. for, for people to be helped. There's a lot of things, people in situations, experiencing circumstances in their lives mm -hmm. that they need, Dr. Haney, more than just prayer. You know, that's, 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 that's what I often think. It, you look, when you see so many people uh, uh, all of them have so many problems, but well, what's the cause of some of the things? I mean, is there a mental situation that, that you can address? Or is it all spiritual or what? Well, you know, I, I think, I, I think there's, there's, there's a little spiritual that goes into that into that thing because you, you, when you, especially when you start experimenting with drugs and drinking mm -hmm. and stuff like that, you actually, to me, you're actually opening a door mm -hmm. to allow any kind of negative influences to come into your lives and mm -hmm. kind of direct your lives and stuff like that. And I think in terms of drug usage and stuff, I know with myself, it, it's kind of, it started off, you know, uh, sipping on my daddy's beer. Okay. <laughs> you know, that's mm -hmm. that, mine mm -hmm. started off sipping on my daddy's beer. Mm -hmm. And then of course, the curiosity and everything about the drugs and stuff. And, and you know, you start doing it, everybody else is doing it. And then mm -hmm. before you know it, 
it starts doing you. Uh -huh. Now it's in, mm -hmm. instead of you being in control of it, mm -hmm. now it's in control of you and it's driving your life now. Mm -hmm. You've it's taking you from the driver's seat and, mm -hmm. it, and now you're acting in accordance to what it wants you mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. So that's what I say in terms of it being uh, uh, somewhat of a spiritual affliction mm -hmm. because, you know, you take the person that, I mean, you got some well-meaning people that people, I mean, some degreed professionals out here that are mm -hmm. addicted and on the streets, you know, mm -hmm. because of this. And, and, you know, it's like, okay, I don't want to do this, but I'm doing this. It's kind of mm -hmm. like what Paul says in the book of Romans, the seventh chapter, you mm -hmm. know, the things I want to do, mm -hmm. I don't do, but okay. the things I don't want to do, that's what mm -hmm. I do, you, doing. you know. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. then, then at the same time, Paul said, there's got to be a solution. Mm -hmm. And who can save me from this, you know, this body of sin and death? Mm -hmm. And he, he acknowledges Christ as being the one. Okay, and of course, uh, Reverend Walker, let's, let's stop at this particular point and we'll have our first commercial break and after which we'll be back with our audience. 